forests are dominated by large plants that crowd one another in their competition for light. But far below on the forest floor are a group of tiny plants known as the mosses. With over 10,000 species, these plants thrive in many habitats. These moss plants form gametes and are therefore gametophytes. Moss gametophytes are haploid, containing only one set of chromosomes. Their small and compact form enables the stems to stay upright, while rhizoids anchor them to the soil. Moisture easily accumulates around the densely spaced stems. This often leaves a film of water on the leaves and on the stem tip. Hair-like growths called paraphyses help to hold the water around the stem tips. Some stem tips are male and contain reproductive structures called dantheridia. These are complex organs consisting of many cells. Each is supported by a stalk. The upper portion consists of an outer protective jacket that surrounds a group of sperm cells. At the tip of a female plant, there are numerous reproductive structures known as archegonia. The top of each consists of a slender neck. The middle region contains a chamber called the venta. The base of the archegonium is attached to the moss stem by a stalk. An egg cell is formed inside the venta. Inside the neck, the breakdown of cells forms a central canal containing sperm attractant. A rain shower provides the ideal conditions for sperm release and their transfer to a female plant. Droplets of rainwater collect at the tips of the moss stems. Inside the drop of water at the tip of the male stem, the antheridia open. This releases cells containing sperm, which float up to the surface. Raindrops splash some of this water out of the male plant. Some splash drops contain sperm cells and fall onto the tip of a female stem. The sperm now escape from their surrounding membrane and use their flagella to move about in search of an egg. The archegonium now opens and releases a sperm attractant. The sperm swim towards the source of the attractant and into the opening. Once inside, they are guided down to the egg. The first sperm to arrive enters the egg cell. Fertilization is completed when the sperm and egg nuclei fuse, creating a diploid zygote.
After fertilization, many changes take place on the female stem tip. At first, the zygote remains within the venter, where it forms an embryo. However, one end of the embryo soon grows out of the venter and into the female stem. This allows it to obtain water and nutrients from the female plant. The other end of the embryo grows upward. The venter expands to accommodate this growth, but eventually it is split in half. The embryo now forms a very long stalk or seta that lifts the top half of the venter up into the air. This results in a small diploid plant, the sporophyte, attached to the tip of the female stem. These female stems have all been fertilized and support sporophytes above them. The tip of each is covered by the torn venter or calyptera. This soon falls away exposing a capsule or sporangium. The capsule contains fertile tissue consisting of sporocytes. Inside the nucleus of each sporocyte, there are two sets of chromosomes. The nucleus divides by the process of meiosis, forming four haploid nuclei. Thin walls now form around each nucleus, resulting in a cluster of four cells, known as the tetrad. A deposit of sporopollenin produces cells with thick, resistant walls, called spores. As the spores are forming, the capsule dries out and hardens. Soon the lid or operculum falls away, revealing a ring of fine teeth called the peristome. These surround an opening in the capsule. As they dry out, they bend backwards, allowing the spores to escape. A light breeze is all it takes to carry the spores away from the parent plant. Spores carried by the wind may land on an exposed surface. After rain, the spore cell absorbs water and germinates. But instead of growing into a new moss plant, it forms a branch filamentous protonema. However, after a period of growth, some of the protonema form buds. Each bud will proceed to grow into a new leafy gametophyte. Spores then enable mosses to spread and colonize new areas, often some distance from the parent plant. Using both gametes and spores, these unassuming members of the plant kingdom quietly proceed to thrive and multiply. They have successfully spread from polar regions to the tropics and are equally at home in our cities or in the countryside. Perhaps a key to their success is their small size. Perhaps it is due to their ancient lineage, going back more than 400 million years to a time when plants were first colonizing the land. Whatever the reason, these tough yet attractive opportunists hold many surprises for the interested observer.